Welcome to the Chemistry 1440 Laboratory video sequence for UNT. If you took the Chem 1 lab somewhere else, we have some videos to catch you up on our safety protocols and our procedures on using different types of equipment. And I'll make a learning module. I'll post that on our Blackboard page so you can catch up. Today we um, need to, number one, focus on safety. So I, you can see I have my nitrile gloves on. I'm always going to have these on in the lab. I want to check and make sure there aren't holes or tears or rips because then the liquid or whatever uh, compound can just come into contact with my skin and make these guys worthless. So I don't want that. I'm always wearing my safety glasses. Even though I have prescription eyeglasses, that doesn't offer enough protection. So I have to wear my safety glasses over my eyeglasses. If you don't wear eyeglasses, then you'll just wear your safety glasses or goggles. You have to wear closed toed shoes. You have to tie your hair back if it's long. You have to make sure you don't have a lot of loose, bulky, flowing clothes, heavy coats, scarves, things like that. We're working with a lot of caustic reactants this semester. So our reagents include sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base, um, sulfuric acid, which is a strong acid, potassium permanganate, which is a really, really nice purple, but it stains. So you want to make sure this semester you're not wearing your best clothes or you have clothes to change into that you have on you for the day of your lab. Again, if you're not wearing your safety glasses, if you're not wearing the appropriate attire and you're not wearing your nitrile gloves, you'll be asked to leave and you won't get credit for the lab. And we don't want that because we're going to have a lot of fun. Our first video is about how to use a burette. This is a burette. It's kind of like a graduated cylinder, but it has a tip to release liquids. This is really important when we do titrations and we're going to do a lot of those this semester. So the first thing to notice is that it's really long and narrow, and this makes it more accurate. We want the best possible value of our volume that we're adding. And so this narrow cylinder allows us a more accurate reading. I have a clamp that holds my burette, and the burette will go in the little indentations. I have a Teflon stopcock. This is the closed position when it's uh, horizontal. When this bar is horizontal, that means it's closed. And you can actually see the hole in the Teflon um, that allows the liquid to flow. When it's open, when it's in the open position, I'll put an Erlenmeyer flask over here to catch any drips. Completely uh, vertical, this is the open position. If you're having a hard time turning your stopcock, or if it's really loose and kind of wiggling out of place, you can adjust this Teflon nut on the back. You can loosen it. You want to make sure it's not too loose, or it will just be leaking the entire time. You don't want it too tight, because then it's really hard to turn. So you can adjust that. Do that before you start measuring. Okay. So now I'm, gonna, I'm going to start by rinsing it with the liquid I'm going to use for my titration. I don't want to start with a dry burette and then just fill it with my titrant because some of that titrant, some of that liquid is going to stay behind and that's affecting how accurate my, my volume recording is. So I'm going to fill it from the top. You can also use a funnel if you like. I prefer not to, but it's up to you. It'll be available. So I'm going to fill it from the top double check and make sure that I'm in the closed position. If this is open, you know, it's just going to come pouring right through. All right, it'll take a couple of seconds to get all the way down there and collect. In one of our other videos, we showed how to use a graduated cylinder and read the meniscus, and that's the U-shaped indentation at the top of the liquid. For a graduated cylinder, if I'm filling it all the way to the top, and then I'm releasing the value of my, the position of my meniscus tells me the volume I had, I've released when I start at zero. In this case, I'm not going to use that much volume for the purpose of our video so you can see a little bit better. So in order to find out how much volume I'm releasing, I have to have an initial reading and then I'll have a final reading. I'll have to subtract those two to figure out the volume. My initial reading, I want to get eye level. How do I know that I'm eye level? Well, the lines on the burette won't have a double. You won't be seeing double. They'll sort of line up perfectly from the other side. 
if we can say a cylinder has a side on the other end, and they'll cancel out. So that's how you know you're at eye level. The number on top is going to be on top of the big line. And if you forget if it's on the top or the bottom, just look at the bottom. You can see the 50 is on the top line. So you know the big line goes with the number that's right on top. So my initial reading is 38. Each smaller line represents a tenth of a milliliter. So this is, make sure I'm even, 38.5. And then I can estimate that last digit. I'll say 2, 38.52. And there is uncertainty in that last digit, I just estimated that. So then I have my initial reading and I'll record that. This isn't 38 milliliters. This is, if I started at zero and let out or released the liquid, I would have released 38 milliliters. So my initial reading is just where I'm starting. You can control the flow by how vertical your stopcock bar is. You can open it all the way in the beginning of a titration once you get close to the uh, end point of your indicator, you want to slow it down. And you can adjust to just do dropwise. You can actually do, turn it all the way around as well. Okay. So I'm going to stop and let's say I've reached the end point of my titration. My indicator has changed color. Now I want to have a final reading. And this is 46 point, really 46.08. It's almost at 0.1, but not quite. Okay, so then I'll subtract those two values, and that will give me the volume that I added. Once I'm done with my titration, I'm not going to pour this in the sink. I'm going to pour it in my waste container. That's appropriate. When I'm done, I can release all of my liquid. And then I'm going to get some DI water. The DI water is ultra pure water, deionized water. So gotten rid of some of those minerals, those ions that are in our water supply. OK. So I'm going to go to the plastic faucet and get some DI water. I'm going to close my stopcock because even though I'm done with my experiment, I'm not finished in the lab. I have to clean up. I have to make sure this is ready for the next lab. So with my DI water from the plastic faucet, I'm going to fill the top. When I'm doing a titration, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to pour it from the top. All of my liquid in the titration is going to be released down here. When I fill up, I forgot to do this. When I fill up, we'll probably have an air pocket. So before you mesh, take your initial reading, release some of that liquid, and then do your initial reading because you probably have an air bubble in here. And that'll affect your reading. Okay, so when I'm doing a titration, I'm never gonna pour from the top, but when I'm cleaning out my burette, I will. So I'll kind of swirl it around as I'm pouring out to rinse my burette. And then I'm also gonna release from the tip so that I'm washing the tip as well. Okay. And now our burette's clean. We've finished our lab. Again, make sure you're not pouring any of this down the drain. We don't want to pour this down the sink. We want to put it in our appropriate waste container. And that's how to use a burette.